Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Rebecca and today we're going to be using the Aquablend watercolour pencils by Spectrum Noir and you saw me do a unboxing and swatching video earlier so click the video at the end if I remember to put it there or if not, you can search for it on my channel. We're going to be using the Fabriano Drawing Book. Let's go. Okay, guys. So, I thought I would, because I've already been pre-sketching off camera, and I've got my water brush which you can see is spraying out already. I don't think they make water brushes that last very long actually. Um, it must be a nightmare for plein air painters. That's why a lot of them go back to their regular normal brushes because these water brushes, however durable, are just not durable. <laughs> they always start spraying out and um, thinning if you're using them a lot and I do so we will start going in with the greens I think and this is the parakeet and I'm just gently going to in circular motions Start filling it all in. Obviously, different colours for each section, and I might um, outline in pen, possibly afterwards. We'll see how it goes. And then this is bright green. And the beauty of these is that you can add water. So you don't have to be that particularly neat. It's not like you can use them as a regular colouring pencil because watercolour pencils, if they're good, are going to be quite soft because of the pigment in them. And these are good. So you don't need much pressure. So you can see, we'll start with the light. Just go in. I mean, the reason I like, I think they're called travel brushes or whatever, a reservoir, they, these are, um, I just call them water brushes, um, I prefer them because I have limited space on my table and water pots, you need two of them and different size paint brushes and it's all a faff and a drag for me to have to set up when I want to just get on and create. It takes a lot of my energy to set up the area, particularly if I'm recording a video. And so this quickens up the process. You've already got the water in the brush and the table is all ready. It's not cluttered. It's a designated area just for doing your sketching. Well, my sketching anyway. And I have a little piece of tissue paper that I just wipe this brush on just to clean the, the bristle. You might notice I've also got my Blackwing pencil. I've been using this now since January and I've 
used my Hovel pencil sharpener on it, you can see. Um, I still am thinking these might be overrated. Um, they're nice, they are smooth, non-scratching, and have all the grades of graphite in one pencil. So if you do like to sketch and stuff, you know, and it's got the eraser. Um, for me personally, it's lovely to have it, but I still am wondering if it isn't overrated, all of the, the black wing stuff. But it's nice to have it to, to try it, see what all the fuss is about. So then, going for a crocus. I'm going to do different colours for all this. And you can just scribble the colour on. Doesn't matter because when we add the water it will all blend out. can be quite tricky getting pencils out of the tray. I could have just tipped them all out, but that's not convenient. So then I'm going to use this kiwi colour for the stem. And then I'm going to use Hyacinth for here, this stem, and I'm going to go in with my water brush and slowly start in circular motions, blending and melting the colour. And you can see the colour just, it just does melt away. You're not left with harsh lines, unless you want them there. And you, you wouldn't um, stroke at it so much. Obviously, if you press too hard with your pencil, like I have in some places, you will be left with the mark. So however much water you put on, you won't be able to... Um, you know, get rid of the line, the marking as such because it kind of damages the paper if you press too hard but I quite like sometimes pressing a little harder and letting the marks be there because for leaves it adds automatically the vein texture of the leaves without you having to do anything afterwards And my style is quite loose. I don't like being regimented. It doesn't matter if the paint goes over the lines. You know, we're not going to faint. I think I still might use this for here as well. I think this is still hyacinth. Yes, it is. And I might even just be daring and directly pick the colour up with the brush. You see, it's even more different by doing that. Directly picking up the colour. And then we'll try more colours. I think we will have to try in a minute the oh, we're losing pencils. I think we will have to try that fluorescent pink. But at the moment we're gonna do rose. Oh, 
and then petunia. It looks bright if you remember, like fluorescent on the barrel, but it's a dark, like cranberry colour. And then powder blue, just going to scribble for some background. There's something so nice about doing traditional art. It's such fun to hold the different art supplies and to see the marks and textures that they make and know that it's everlasting. I'm not poo-pooing digital art when I say that. I have done some digital art. But I just don't think there's any substitute for traditional art supplies to actually have that sense of freedom and joy of holding different materials in your hand and seeing what they can do on different papers. different surfaces in general not just paper but you can use them on canvases black paper I don't know about these actual pencils but you know what I mean so we'll then I think we'll do a little bit of the oak colour kind of alter me I am pressing a bit hard now I'm going to go directly down the middle for that and I'm going to do the same on there and then We're going to use cherry wood now. It's quite a lovely colour. And then we're going to go for Damson, I think. And then we will have a cherry. Have we already done cherry? I don't think we did. But anyway, we're having a cherry up here. And then we will do coral down the middle. Kind of pinky orange. And I'm just literally, no planning, just grabbing the colours at random as and when I feel like it. And that is the joy of expression. This is a carrot colour. I didn't even know this was going to turn into a YouTube video. I 
did earlier today a sketch and didn't particularly know what I was going to do with it. it was inspired by Pinterest but obviously not copied it was just inspired by okay so we'll start adding a bit of water now so that we can see where we're at just blending in the background You guys can see why this brush and all of my brushes wear down so quickly, can't you? Because <laughs> they do get used a heck of a lot. And I'm not gentle particularly with them. <laughs> well, there is a limit to how gentle you can be when you are blending out watercolour pencils and watercolour crayons you do have to apply some pressure to melt the, the wax etc I suspect though water brushes are more of a disposable thing like you're lucky if you get two painting sessions out of them probably and um, then you have to buy more so it could be not very economical but we'll see I certainly have gone through a lot of testing of water brushes done Stettler, Faber-Castell Secure Koi, obviously this is the Kataki H2O water brush and I think there's been another I can't remember but it should be on my channel I'm sure I've ranted about them all. <laughs> but it's good for you to know so that you don't have to waste your money on them. I wish there was a company out there <laughs> that would make durable bristles on the water brushes so that they don't wear down like this. So basically the tip will start, it wears down from like the outside, does that make sense? So the outside will start wearing down and down and down which is what happened with my koi, secure one, so that you end up with the thinnest of threads of the nylon bristles. And I'm not fussed about having water brushes in different shapes. I just want this bristle to be durable so that it's not going to wear away 
and that is ultimately what happens of all of them. They wear down uh, incredibly quickly. So I'm quite liking this. So I'm not pushing too much with the background as such. Some places I'm adding a bit more water, but I don't need all the marks to go because that's kind of adding to the whole design. So then I need to add these middles here. So let's have what is this? This is pineapple, so I'll try that. It's really good actually. And it's nice just actually, it can inspire more design. Like, I just want to do this, it's kind of cool. And, have we done this? Yep, we did damson. I like actually, there's no black in this set. This is the darkest and it's peat. So it's all perfect for gardeners, this set. Hence why it's called botanical. But if you like to draw, you know, greenhouses and gardens and all of that, this is going to be a lovely set. So then we just need to use a, f a few more blues, I think, and then we'll have used the whole set. So this is opal blue. And it doesn't matter that I've chosen a blue for the background because it just all will blend and stand out. The background is gentle and these are at the front so more bold and vibrant. And then this is regal blue. same crocus and we haven't had elderberry so we will get that on here this is the crocus and this is the elderberry done yellow as such so we've got 
Oh, we've done pineapple. We haven't done dandelion. And we haven't done, I think these three, just these last three pencils. So that's honeycomb. Oh, we've done carrot. So honeycomb and dandelion. We haven't done. So that's really good, but I've been able to incorporate all of the pencils. Well, almost all. I'm sure there'll be one I've forgotten. There usually is. But I haven't used all the garden. Or jungle green. I'm not sure about kiwi either. So, that's three. And then I think I've definitely used them. All the colours. So this is oregano. Jungle Green, the brush. I think we've got one stem here. Just to get the brown off. And just making these patterns stand out. And then we want this stem standing out. these patterns. Some really nice colours in this set. And what's fun is that I've noticed, depending on the art supply you use, depends on the look, the outcome, basically, of your finished piece. This would look completely different in gouache. And completely different in acrylic. Totally different in oil pastel. <laughs> But I would have to adapt to those different mediums. It wouldn't be as 
whimsical and fluid with those other mediums because they're not they're heavy mediums if that makes sense they're not light and delicate like watercolor is particularly acrylic and oil pastels you'd have to do things bigger and more bold basically Well, I would. <laughs> I mean, oil pastels are quite chunky. So I'm hoping that you're liking this video so far, guys. And I'm hoping you will consider giving me the thumbs up. Give a comment. And share my video it really does help me in the youtube algorithm to find my videos for other people if you do um, start interacting on my channel and sharing it just to let youtube know that you are interested in what i create and what i do on my channel I have got affiliate links that help support me as a creative should there be anything that you're deciding to purchase and I have a link in my description it's at no extra cost to you and you are going to buy that item anyway and it just helps me out and other creatives when you use the affiliate links. I do like picking up the paint directly from the pencil. <laughs> there are a lot of artists would cringe, you're like, oh no, you're ruining your pencil, the pencil artists. But there's a lot of us out there artists that still like picking up paint from our pencils. Because again, it gives you a different effect. And basically, with the Hovel pencil sharpener, I would be getting rid of so much of the wood on my pencils anyway. It would be like having a stick of pigment in my hand. This was just my first proper use of these pencils to see how um, kind of pigmented they are and how they look together. And... I'm impressed. As I say, it doesn't say they're light fast. That would be my only um, point to pick up on. And other than that, I think they're absolutely lovely to use. The colours, it's nice and um, pigmented. It's nice and soft. You're not having to drag the brush over it. You're not having to really dig into the paper to get a mark from a pencil. And I think, guys, that is where I'm going to be leaving it. Though, could be changing my mind and adding a bit of an outline, I think, to a few bits here. Using, this is the Lamy Bold Nib Pen. But the ink is Aubergine uh, Reuherklinger ink. I could not pronounce it. It is German Ink Company that does artist ink and it is waterproof. This just helps 
to pick out any item that you want to stand out more. And you don't have to do this. And I purposely did not buy black ink. I'm trying my best to stay away from black this year if possible. So using mainly um, my Neo Color tunes and no black if I can help it. <laughs> I was watching a YouTube artist. I can't remember her surname or her channel. But she was saying how black actually creates like an ash, a black ash effect on your work and really dulls it and makes it flat. And she did um, a comparison of no black and black and you could see the difference that without the black and using contrasting colors like really dark blues the indigos and the purples and a real dark green you created a much more dynamic effect than just black so i'm trying i think her name is margot but i can't remember the surname I will try and if you're curious let me know and I will try and share her channel link in my description. And I'm being very slapdash. I'm not being perfect. Going, you know, really tight. You know, if I miss and go over something, it doesn't matter. It's adding to the piece. And ultimately, this is your sketchbook. And you can do what you like. I am not one for saying that there are rules in art. You know that a tree is green in real life. So in your sketchbook, if you want to do a purple one, or a black one, <laughs> or a grey one, or pink and orange, then you can. You do what you like.
Well, it's taken on a totally different look now, hasn't it? Now that we've added some pen. And this is almost where I leave. It's not. Um, it's like an idea that I can take further in a new design. So in the next design, if I do this again, I would probably maybe build up more layers and make it more intense. But this just gives me a plan. And it was to see the colours working together. And this is in the Fabiano sketchbook, which has changed in quality since I last used one. It's um, a little disappointing for me. And I didn't know it had changed. And I did a positive review on Jackson Art Supplies because I couldn't, like, in my mind, there was no way the quality would have ever changed. And, of course, it did and has. And so um, it's not awful, but it's, it's not as good as it used to be. It's as a, it warps. I mean, I'm just, I'm coming off of the Harney Mule, a DNS sketchbook which does not warp at all no matter how much like I was putting on it and this I'm putting less on it and it's you've got warping and uh, no ribbon it is still a hardback but as I say the warping is really quite bad so I think this is where I'm going to leave it, guys, for absolute certainty now. And this has come out really quite nice. I'm pleased with this. I hope you have enjoyed the process, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!